the way that people use data, I think we don't even think about it these days. Everyone does think about their phone and apps and all of that, that information that's being moved around. But we often forget about how it's being used in our streaming services and Netflix and in our communications. Particularly since COVID, we've seen a proliferation of video conferencing and we know that this is only gonna continue. From 2020 to 2025, we're expecting that data usage to quadruple. And that's probably a conservative estimate. So what does that mean in practical terms? It's really all about the data center. The data center is, in some ways, it's a warehouse. It's a very large scale building with a number of servers and storage. You're probably passing by them in your daily lives. And what people often don't realize is that they require a great deal of power. So as we think about this for NTT, Obviously, this is a very important piece of our business. We have more than 100 data centers in 20 countries around the world. We are constantly thinking about new ways uh, to create efficiency and better utilize the energy and better serve both our clients and, and really the environment as we go forward. In Japan, at our Mitaka data center, we are addressing these issues and really focusing on new technologies that will increase efficiency and achieve our sustainability goals. The structure of the building was designed to curve outwardly to optimize the escape of the hot air and all the cold air enters from the below part of the building, which they call the cold patio. So we get cold air from outside Cold air goes through to the machine room and cools the machine down, and hot air goes to a vent. Inside the data vaults, the Mitaka Data Center deploys a secondary cooling system that's highly efficient, in addition to traditional conservation techniques to try and create the most efficient data center they can in Japan. Another unique aspect of the Mitaka data center is its protection against earthquakes. The data center is built on top of a base isolation system, and it allows the building to move independently from the ground should there be an earthquake. This is a model of the building. Uh, so this is called patio where we visit it, and the UPS room, server room. When it comes to earthquake, this isolation layer uh, reduces 80% of horizontal shake, and this uh, vibration damper reduces 20% of vertical shake. That same system, actually, as we're here today in our Santa Clara data center, we deployed here in California, which is also an area that has earthquake issues. We are trying to build efficient data centers with sustainability in mind. Particularly in Santa Clara, one of the big challenges we have is the use of water. Many people probably know California has been in a drought for many, many years now. So we need to be very conscious of how we use the resources around us. And in this data center, we've built a waterless design uh, that has a very efficient cooling system, but also doesn't use water in our cooling solutions. We move cold water down across our fan walls uh, that are adjacent to our data center. And that blows the air over that cold water and creates chilled air that runs into our data vaults. At the same time, once that water has warmed up after running across that coils, we run that up to the roof and we use outside air to recool that water, then push it back down in that system and it runs a continuous cycle. What's important about that is it doesn't use any water. In our Berlin data centers, we've actually taken a completely different tack. When we think about sustainability and how we deal with the heat that's created within our data centers, rather than simply exhaust that uh, into the environment, we found a way to capture that and reuse that to actually heat the offices that are adjacent to our data center. How does it really work? The hot water coming from the IT equipment, which is which we are cooling down there, coming through these pipes, driven by these pumps, going on the bottom of and this heat exchanger. This is the heat exchanger here. Uh, the temperature will be something like 30 degrees Celsius. That will be cooled in the heat exchanger to 20 degrees Celsius. The difference maybe uh, so is 10 degrees. And what happens with this excess heat? 
the heat goes from our data center to the uh, district heating system and for heating the storages, the offices, the uh, companies in our neighborhood. So we will be able to deliver up to 1.5 megawatt heat from this heat exchanger and we're going to extend it to uh, up to 6 megawatt so we can deliver carbon-free heat to our neighbors and be part of the solution for carbon-free energy use here in, in Berlin. We want to operate this data center for the coming 30, 40, maybe 50 years. And being future-proof definitely means to be able to reuse all the energy we are putting into the data center as, uh, as waste heat uh, usage for, for our partner. The, the opportunity to, to work together with uh, such a world-class firm um, is a privilege. And um, I think this meets very well with our ambition to be the driver of the green Energiewende, how we call it here in Berlin, the energy transition in Berlin. 5,000 homes can be easily be heated by making use of this green excess heat from a data center. But this is not science, this is not research, this is making use of what is there. Technologically, engineering-wise, we are fully capable of doing this. And I'm also confident uh, that it's economically viable. So our future plan goes way beyond uh, this very first exciting step. We are trying to scale it and to take it to other places. So we are already now in talks with NCT about two further sites um, where we actually want to roll out this idea in the next stage. As we look at what we're doing in Berlin and in Japan and in California, each of these are unique solutions that we're deploying today, but they are all small pieces of what is a bigger effort overall. NTT is, is one of the largest companies in the world, and we need to take advantage of that scale uh, to develop new solutions and technologies on a continuous basis to address uh, some of the environmental concerns and to really achieve some of the sustainability goals that we've set up uh, as a company. Our R&D groups are working on some amazing technology developments uh, that we hope to see in the near future. Things like photonic networks that consume virtually no energy, uh, as well as putting data centers in, in places like space uh, where you don't need cooling solutions. So for us here at NTT, it's about making things better today and sustainable for tomorrow.